Okay, I want to just take a few minutes to go through a bit more magazine talk here. Um, I think the best way for you to learn about magazines is to look at a lot of them. And then, of course, there's the glossary file I gave you as far as learning the terms of them. And there'll be an assignment coming up next week. Um, this magazine project spans these weeks. So uh, don't just forget about it and leave it, leave it there. Um, you've already now at this point had some magazine name ideas and font ideas. Um, so in particular, I want to talk about the, uh, the pages and what the template looks like. And also the idea that you have to create some styles too. Um, but as part of this in learning about magazines, uh, you'll see on the Moodle site for this week, I have included three videos. Um, the first one is actually this one here, um, Wired Magazine. It's an older video. The quality may not be that great, but some very good information from the art director of, of uh, Wired Magazine. Um, this uh, just showing magazine design changes in this one magazine is interesting, worth watching, cover design in particular. And this is a spread that's being designed. And I think the fun thing about this is that it's um, it's like all this design work condensed down into just a minute, like three hours of work or something as you watch um, the, the, the movie of it happening. So those are all good for what they are. Um, but I think when you look at magazines and you see how different they are in some ways than newspapers, you really want to try to emulate some of those things in the magazines that you need to have around you. You need to have them around you. For the, those videos are for what they're worth. When you go to uh, Moodle and you go to our template folder now, now you will see a magazine template. Um, there is a magazine template in the, the downloaded art that you have i wouldn't rely on that one please go use this one use this magazine template from the from the um templates folder in the area on moodle not in the week by week area but up where we get had the templates along where the handouts and the resources are so use that one when you open that up it's going to look like this roughly and you're going to see already there's a lot of differences here first of all this is a multi-page um a multi-page document the template opened up into an untitled document you'll want to save this and continue your work in this document i'm going to have you add i'm going to this is obviously the cover what can we talk about when we look at this document well there's a number of differences first of all um, you'll see our our content area is designated and what i have set up for you is a three stack stick grid or three column grid on these pages you may very well want to work with that and change it the easiest way to change a grid is to just take a um a text box and put it on where you want your grid to be and look at the effect of changing the number of of sticks within there from one up to two up to three which is what is there up to four or something but i think starting with a three column is not a bad idea on most pages i'll save that for later your cover is definitely going to have cover lines it's going to have a, a logo of some kind. It's going to have some kind of big art. Remember, you're still just using the content I gave you. It's almost certainly going to have what we call a bleed. This is the idea. <clears throat> I'll get this out of here and let me go get a big image. Um, also, you'll see that magazine images tend to not have... Actually, I'll use the other box because magazine images tend to not have change it back to a rectangle, tend to not have a frame around it. So if I, I should not see any, uh, any stroke on the frame of the image. Um, how do we use this idea of the, of the bleed, okay? The bleed means when the image goes all the way to the edge, when the image goes all the way to the edge, it doesn't just go right to the edge. It actually goes past the edge because magazines are trimmed, a trimmed product. That means that the page, after it's printed, extra is printed, and then it is trimmed to size. It's trimmed to size. So you actually make your, your image slightly bigger than the page if it's a full page image, and it may very well be the case for your cover and for some other pages too, perhaps. I'm going to go grab some of this stuff. There's my magazine project stuff. 
And I'm going to go grab a big piece of art, which is probably not the one you're going to use. And I'm going to grab this right here. What is that? Oh, well, maybe that. I don't know. And I'm going to just make it enormous. I'm going to fit, comp, uh, not proportionally. I'm going to fill a frame proportionally. I'm going to say, maybe that's my cover. And see how it goes beyond the edge of the page to a, actually, now it does, to a trim mark. Um, so that would be the, the trim. And then, then we see this image bleeds. That is the bleed line, the edge. Sorry, the, the trim mark is the edge of the page. The bleed line is the page in which we ex place on the, the actual outside area that we extend the image to in order to show, make sure that we get beyond where it's going to be cut. Because we don't want, we want it to be as if it was completely to the edge. And the way to do that is to actually go beyond the edge. So that's one thing that's different. Um, and if we're using this image, this image, for instance, down here on one of these spreads, <clears throat> you have to do, uh, do at least two spreads. One of your spreads will be respecting the, the alley. This is the alley, right? That would mean that it might be, maybe the image is going to go right there, right? And then they'll have some text over here, maybe another image. And then I want one of them to not, one of them go, go beyond. That may, might mean that the image is going to go actually across the alley in some format there. Let's say we had it like that, and then I want to fill that proportionally. Um, now the image goes across the alley, which is the middle gutter, and I would have to deal with this area with text and perhaps this area with text. Or maybe I have it, the image goes across and stops there, all the way around. So it's actually going across, or maybe it goes across and it bleeds. Bleeds off just the edge. It bleed, maybe just bleeds in one one point right there, like there and there, and fit it. Okay, so now my image is going to be trimmed here, but full here, with room top and bottom, maybe for a caption here and then text in here. So we have the the idea of the the um, bleed mark, which is the edge of the page, and the trim mark. Sorry, the trim mark, which is the edge of the page, and the bleed mark, where it goes beyond the page. We have the idea of the alley in there. So you're going to do two spreads, and one of them is going to respect the gutter, and one of them is going to not. It's going to go across the, across, sorry, respect the alley and go across the alley. And then if you want to do more for extra credit, as is in the assignment, you can. Um, what else does it say in the assignment? Let's just take a quick look there and see that it says... Um, you're going to, okay, we have the theme and colors and type choices have to work together. You have your name, you're going to create a cover, color, cover logo. Maybe that type is going to be distinctive. At least three paragraph styles. Oh yes, paragraph styles. We'll talk about those next. I, I mentioned these uh, cover and the two spreads, and maybe do some extra stuff. Some people in this project like to, and for extra credit, you may design some ads, design an optional ad here that would fit in there. A table of contents, that'd be extra credit if you want to do that. Cover is required. One, two spreads are required. Want to do another spread for extra credit? Sure, go ahead. Or some other play here. You can do the back cover for extra credit if you wish too. Remember, this all has to work together as a theme. Do as many pages as you like, but there are some that are required. One, then this spread, then this spread are required. Okay, so um, let's talk about type a little bit. Let me go grab some type. You may start with, if you want, for what it's worth, you may use as a beginning point, some of our, of some of our shapes. Um, but I, but whatever you do, remember captions can go in different places. Look at your magazines; you see captions in different places. Remember, headline boxes and body copy boxes don't have to be arranged in a line exactly like we had them in newspapers. You have more flexibility. Um, and remember, headline display heads are actually often very large. Um, and some of the work you did with the one type could fit into some of these too. So keep that in mind too. But let me just go get some text. I want you, I'm not going to tell you everything to do because I want you to, to feel like you are able to experiment um, as you go along. I'm going to use some actual type here, which is going to be, I guess it's going to be this story, I guess. Uh, I'll just go drag and drop it on the page. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't like the fonts. Okay. Yeah, it's all going to be pink. That means the fonts, it doesn't, can't find the font. And for now, I'm just going to stick it into the body copy. Okay. All right, so here's the problem with body copy. Oops. Oops, that was wrong. 
let's look at it in here. Let's make this one stick, which is, we tend to have wider sticks of copy in magazines also. Uh, so I'll make that one stick and I'm just going to grab this text. We tend not to have bylines either. We we'll probably don't have a byline. Um, I'm just going to grab the text from here down just so I can get some text to play with. Okay. So get rid of your get rid of your date lines. You're not going to use normal bylines. You're not going to use a normal byline style. Um, you have to find a different way to do the bylines. Um, but also, look at this text. Does that look like magazine text? No, it does not. What's wrong with it? First of all, it's a little small, and it's really kind of jammed close together. Go look at, an, at a magazine. How does your magazine text look like? Well, it actually tends to be, it might be this font, but you're choosing your own fonts. Uh, it should be a serif font, though. Please, for the text, make a serif font for the regular text, not a sans serif font. Maybe, and go through your other uh, San, your other serif fonts. Um, Garamond's a nice choice. You could do some searches. Georgia, yeah, I don't like it quite so much, but you can try different ones. I'm going to go to Garamond, let's say. Let's say you choose a font for some reason. It's going to be bigger. All right, good. Uh, let's say you decide your magazine type has 11 point. Okay, that might not be that unusual. It's going to have a lot more letting than normal. It might have as much as that much letting. Um, you could choose auto, but that's really not enough. It's going to go even bigger. And then you're going to look at it. You're going to look at the magazines. You're going to see what else. Some magazines are justified, but many are not the type. Let's say your normal type is not justified. So it's, so it's ragged on the edge. Okay. And maybe you'll say my type is actually going to be even, maybe we want a little bit more air in there. So maybe it's actually 14, 15 is a lot. But that could be doable. It's definitely going to be different. So what else will you do to your to your? So you're gonna you're gonna play with this. You're gonna look at it. You look at magazines. You're gonna decide what your style is gonna be, and then you're gonna make the style. So how are you gonna make the style? And it, and it will only be attached to this document at this time. Um, so uh, this is how how you make a style. Oh, I lost my recording button again. So hold on. Okay, I'm back recording again. Um, by the way, in the meantime, I changed this. I made that head a little bigger. I also wanted to see it with a descender, too. Um, it's nice to see descenders when you're thinking about your headline sizes. Okay, so I worked on this. And look at the difference between my body cop, regular body copy, and this text here. Good. And let's say I uh, worked, worked, tried, tried, different things, looked at magazines, and decided that this is what I wanted to do. Well, I would select a paragraph like I, when I got the type the way I liked it. I went over the paragraph styles, and then you would use the little pull down here. You say new paragraph style, and you give it a name. I, I'm going to call this one uh, Jack Mag, um, or call it whatever you want. But I want I'm going to be looking for this. In fact, this is one of the few exercises where, although yes, you're going to create a PDF and give it to me, you're also going to give me the InDesign file, mostly so I can go through and look and see that you did these things. I want to see a name style, and I want to see that you used it in your copy too. Um, so uh, it'll be the basic textile that your stories will be in in this. And there may not be a lot of stories shown uh, on these pages, but there should be some stories shown on these pages. Um, so we made that style. Okay, good. Now it's going to be based on the body, the body style, and that's fine. It can be based on that. Next style, same style. In other words, re that style repeats. In the shortcut, we're not going to worry about it. Um, you can go through these these styles and see. Yes, it chose Garman. It shows in regular 11 point, that letting and so on. Um, there's advanced character formats. We could change the scaling. Let's say you went through this and you decided that, no, in fact, I want, in fact, you can preview it too. I want it to be a little bit more squished a little bit maybe, right? Let's do the horizontal scale. I'm gonna add the preview and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. Actually, I can't preview it right now because I haven't, I haven't applied the style yet, that's right. Anyway, so you could you would play with the type first that would be the best way to do it. And then you would decide if you wanted to squish it or something. Um, you could do uh, lots of other changes. One thing that magazines would work on a lot was hyphenation and justification, those rules. We're not going to, but you can see how the control you can have on way words hyphenate and the way and the and the spacing involved in justification also, which is we're not justifying the type at all. We're having a ragged. Justification is when you go out to a single uh, 
straight border. I mean, in my example, you may choose to have justification. Some magazines do on their copy. Many don't. Some do on some things and not on others, too. Um, and uh, we won't worry about the rest of this right now. We're going to come back and do some of these other things later. So we would just say, OK. And now that style is there. So if I had a paragraph I wanted to place in that style, I'd go to Paragraph Styles. And we'll go find it. There it is, Jack Mag. And now that is in that style there. I would do the same kind of work with the headline. I'd work on the headline and find my headline font. Maybe this was the font that you chose at the be beginning, or maybe you change your mind now. I think probably your headline is going to be a serif also, but maybe not. Or maybe you'll have a couple choices, right? Maybe it'll be minion or something, right? And maybe you'll want to do some other work on it. Um, maybe it's a little bit loose and you want to track it back some. Sorry, that's scaling. Scale it back some. Um, and maybe you're generally going to use it in italic or something. Um, and keep on working on that. And then you make a headline style. Call it, probably use the same, whatever you named the, the uh, body type copy, if you named it mag or you named your name, your name or something, use that same naming idea with the headline one. And then you're going to do a caption one also. So I want you to make at least those three styles and actually make them in the here and actually use them in the document. Okay. Um, we're going to do an exercise called Featureize, where we're going to talk about some other things you can do with type and so on. But before we do that, at least I want to talk to you about making a drop cap. So we're going to do it. Um, we'll do a, a manual drop cap here, just so you can see the way one might work. Um, so hold on just a second. Okay, so I'm in this. I put my cursor in this first paragraph. I want to have a drop cap. What is a drop cap? A drop cap is a big capital letter that sits down in here. Okay. Um, and I would go then over to my paragraph, paragraph panel, and choose drop caps and nested styles. And now I'm going to put my preview on, and we'll see what happens. How many lines do I want to have? How many characters? And what character style? Now, character style. In other words, we could have first made a character style and then applied it here. We're going to do this on the fly. Maybe then I'll do one using the character style. So we're going to do three lines, three lines, and we're going to do one character. And that's what it would look like. Maybe like four lines better. Maybe you like to align the left edge. Maybe you want to uh, scale for descenders. If there's a descender, that's not really an option so much. Um, so we get a big initial letter, but maybe you don't like that font there, you know, maybe that's part of it too. I know one thing you don't want is you don't want the, that first line indent there also. So where are we going to do that? Well, we could take care of that other places in the paragraph, um, in this box here or up here, that first line indent is right there. I get rid of it, put a zero in there. So that's gone now. And then I could select this letter and maybe I don't want it to be the same font as the body copy. Maybe I want it to be the same font as the headline, which was what? Um, Minion, I think? Is that what we did? I don't remember what we did. Minion Pro, I think, yeah. And then maybe we also want to make it italic like the other had been, like that a little bit. And maybe that's my my style. Or maybe I make the drop cap a different color or something. Um, and now, of course, I did change the style of this paragraph. But the key thing is that once you get a drop cap, cap you like and, and, you, it, and it works the way you want it to, um, then you can actually make it into a style and you can um, redo it. So you can make it more manual. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that I've made this one and this is the way I like them. Now, you're not going to do this on every paragraph, uh, obviously. You're going to do it on the first paragraph. You might do some other treatment, perhaps where a story jumped. So you probably only have one of these on each spread. So theoretically, you could do them manually. And they don't have to always be the same either. Maybe if you use a different headline font for some reason, maybe you'll have a different drop cap or maybe a different color on this drop cap because it works better with the design. I think little touches of color on type are okay, but whatever you do, watch out about making your type just lots of color on your type. It gets hard to read. I think there's nothing wrong with black type, so be happy with black type. Maybe just little touches of, of color, like the first letter of a headline or maybe a drop cap too, or one or the other maybe only, and only where it's appropriate and only where it matches your whole style. Um, so actually, you know what, and therefore, because you're doing so few drop caps, I'm not going to show you the style on those right now. Maybe we'll talk about that later because we've done enough here, I think. So you have drop caps, you have making your styles. You're going to have other things. You're going to have call outs. 
you see other way, big ways to use text. Maybe you like a certain um, area that will be, you know, a chunk of text that you think is important or something, and you'll you'll stick it in somewhere, and you'll tell it to come to the front. Um, actually, it already is at the front. You're going to tell it to do to to ignore the text wrap around it, and you'll tell it to have text wrap. And you'll tell it to be really big. You're going to put on auto, and then this is now becomes 36. So it's almost like a headline inside other type, you know, uh, some piece of text which is important. And then you have to push that stuff around a little more so you don't have the touching and so on. So there's call outs and other ways, and maybe it's all in italic, and so on and so forth. So you get to relax and play um, as you go along. Enough for now. Um, so you're moving into your designs, you're planning things out, you're deciding how they're going to work, and you're starting to play with the type and make it all come together, and your cover design, that you're working on that also, and with the requirements. And keep going back to the in initial assignment sheet so you know what the requirements are. You have to have some cover line, color, some um, cover lines, some refers to stories on the inside from your, from your, the front of your magazine too.